So, Bunny, it's been a it's been a while. In fact, it's been a long, long while. But unfortunately, we have to once again talk about YouTube copyright laws. Okay. Because I've been hit a couple of times recently with copyright notifications. Now, first off, uh, I've I've been hit with four of uh, three of them. Two of them are not surprising because I have made a bit of a name for myself with my uh, a, a very very small amount of name for myself with uh, edits of Mystery Science Theater. Yeah. Because I have two shorts compilations on YouTube that are doing ridiculous numbers. That's number one. And then number two, I, I recently put up a new edit that I'm very proud of. Uh-huh. What's that? Although I, think, although I think people will hate me for it. I got two episodes of Mystery Science Theater and I combined them as if they were one episode. Because I, I find it fascinating that that classic Mystery Science Theater covered... The amazing, the amazing Colossal Man, and the sequel War of the Colossal Beast. Yeah. And, what, Eleanor? Oh, really? You 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 spat you spit on a wolf? That's amazing. Thank you for repeatedly yelling that at me. That's really awesome. Oh, uh, this. This apple that you cried at me that you wanted? Maxwell, stop scaring the baby with the horse head. Take off the horse head. Take off the horse head. You know she's scared of it. Do not get in her face with the horse head. Exciting day. (laughs) So I combined the amazing Colossal Man and War of the Colossal Beast together. I removed the ending of the amazing colossal man and i removed the beginning of war of the colossal beast and i put them together like it's one big episode yeah look at me look at me look at me it's like one it's like one big nearly three hour episode that i'm really proud of i think some people are are going to be upset with me Super exciting day. Really <laughs> wonderful to be a father. Have you it's have a, you considered yeah. selling her for scientific experimentation? You know, being a father is just such a blessing. Everyone listens to you and you're super important and everybody cares. Yeah. So yeah, no, it's just really fun. And especially be a stay at home dad. God, the just the fun never stops. <laughs> um so I, I got rid of the ending of The Amazing Colossal Man and the beginning of War of the Colossal Beast, and I put them together. So once the first movie ends, the second movie begins. The only negative part about that is that I had to remove the short in front of War of the Colossal Beast, which is what everyone considers to be the best short, Mr. B. Natural. Yeah, but, I, I, but, I don't know if that's the best short. Well, uh, uh, according to people... Who were really pissed off that I didn't put it on the first shorts compilation. It's the best one, and the fact that I didn't put it on my uh, compilation was a crime, and I'm a horrible person, and yada yada yada. Uh huh. So, so I think it's interesting that they did a movie and its sequel, and they didn't make a big deal about it. You know, I find that interesting that Joel did that. I mean, technically, they did two Godzilla movies, but there's no. There's nothing that keeps those two films together other than the fact that Godzilla is in both of them, you know? Yeah. This is an actual continuation. Yeah. So I'm not surprised with those, but the the next one was a bit of a surprise. Now, usually when a video on YouTube is hit with a copyright notice, and again, anyone can slap a copyright notice on any video. It's really a broken system. Mm-hmm. The the person who posted the video gets the chance to fight it, and I do have that option. I'm not fighting this surprising third copyright notification, and let me tell you why. The video in question, I'm not surprised that I was hit with a copyright when I'm editing Mystery Science Theater, because that's not my, this is not my creation that I'm editing. Yeah. That's not surprising. 
But the video in question that's surprising is a movie that we have done on the podcast. We did it on the podcast like forever ago. The 1954 film, The Snow Creature. Yes. I posted it on YouTube about two years ago to complement episode 40, a double feature of Devil Girls from Mars and The Snow Creature. Uh-huh. It's The film is in the public domain, so I cut it up. And I added an intro and an ending with a very young Maxwell. Uh-huh. Uh, so Maxwell and I are hosting the film, kind of. And then there's uh, I, I, I advertise our, our podcast, the Pop on Film on it. And I added a bunch of, of, of public domain drive-in stuff and movie previews and things. All copyright-free shit, too, that I got <laughs> off of archive.org so that yeah. no one would hit me with one of these really annoying-ass copyright notices. But I got hit! And it was for the movie previews. That's what got me. And so now here's the thing, though. I was hit for copyright notices from the estate of Roger Corman. From the estate of Roger Corman? From the estate of Roger Corman. He's not dead yet, is he? Yeah. From the Roger, no, he's not dead yet. But let's talk about Roger Corman. This is the crux of the of this entire segment. Okay. I this 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 segment is actually not about YouTube and its shitty ass copyright rules. That was just a Trojan horse to get us into talking about Roger fucking Corman. Okay. 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 We need to talk about him now and soon. So Roger Corman. What baby? I I don't know what you're saying. You need to learn more words. So, originally, Roger Corman was going to be an engineer like his dad, but he left the engineer business and started in Hollywood at the exact bottom as a message boy for 20th Century Fox. In 1953, he sold his first script, Yeah, which was rewritten and redone and came out in 1954 as the film Highway Dragnet, and Roger Corman was all, wait, this isn't my fucking movie. <laughs> this isn't what I read. This isn't what I imagined. This isn't what I pictured. They totally butchered my script, man. Well, if I want my script to be filmed right, well, how hard can making a movie be? <laughs> oh, there you got some. Yeah. So he scrounged together a small amount of money and a script and a cast. And he made his first film, the 1954 movie Monster from the Ocean Floor, which was quickly followed by the 1955 film The Fast and the Furious. Really? And then from 1954 on, he made over 50 movies in 15 years. And that's freaking insane. He's credited on IMDb as directing 56 movies, and get this, producing over 400 films. Wow. Basically, he's a one-man film studio, which is probably why they gave him an honorary Oscar in 09. And see, I managed to get through this entire biography of Roger Corman without once mentioning that 90% of his movies are worthless pieces of shit. True. Hooray! I'm starting to think like maybe like maybe Roger Corman can be my nemesis. Yeah? Maybe. Yeah. So I don't really have a nemesis right now except maybe a, a, it, for a while my nemesis was a major corporation but uh, it, now that I'm, I'm actually getting severance from said corporation <laughs> Uh, I'm less uh, prone to attack them online. So they're not really that much of a nemesis for me anymore. So I'm I, like, I'm, I'm in the market for a nemesis. What about Tim Burton, man? Tim Burton is different because he is, uh, he, and he is obviously infatuated with me. He's, oh. he's, 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 he's miserying me. Oh, you know, I see. He's he's my number one fan, and his entire career has been based on me. If anything, I bet right now Tim Burton is freaking out because uh, 
I was fired from the bookstore and it's like, oh, dang it. I had five, my next five movies were based on books he liked at the bookstore. Now what am I going to do? So he's probably like, he, maybe he's the person who's buying the house next to mine. Oh. Mm. So he can spy on me. Maybe, oh, maybe that's what the squirrels Tim. are. Maybe he trains squirrels. Yeah. Yeah. Hi, I'm Tim Burton. And my next film is going to be about a shirtless one and a half year old girl who loves eating fruit snacks and crying for no reason. Good job, Eleanor. <laughs> You're going to be a star. So anyway, I think having Roger Corman as a nemesis might be fun. But here's the main point. You're going to you're going to have to you're going to have to hurry because he's going to die soon. Exactly. Roger Corman just turned 92 years old. Yeah. So can you imagine the shit that will go down once he dies? I mean, do you know how many times people will be defending the terror? Yeah. Yeah. Everybody's going to absolutely fall in love with Roger Corman and they've always been in love with Roger Corman. They just never said it until he died. Yeah. Suddenly everyone is on social media talking about how amazing dementia 13 is oh. little shop of horrors. Little shop of horrors will be in your fucking face constantly. It'll be on TV 24 seven. Yeah. And both the original and that weird musical that I never, that I never liked. Uh, you didn't like Every, it? I, I didn't like the musical because I think I, I my parents took me to go see it the day it came out, and I think I was just a bit too young, yeah. you know? I was a bit too young, and, like, all these people are dying, and it's kind of it, – it, it was it was too frightening for me. Yeah. You know? So, so yeah, no, I never got a hang of the musical, despite the fact that Steve Martin's in it and, and, and everything – uh, Rick Moranis. No, I never, I never got into the musical. I mean, so, I'm, I'm not in love with it. I, I prefer the original Little Shop like, of Horrors. No, I like it. But I but like the musical. It's, it's, little it's shop, not bad. Little Shop of Horrors. Little <laughs> I prefer anything that has Dick Miller in it. Yes, I Dick like Miller. Was in, I like yeah. Dick. Yeah, love that man. Can you imagine, like, a, every time you go on social media, like, a different major corporation is there? This is CNN. Did you know that a young Jack Nicholson got his start? Yeah, motherfucker, I did know that. Uh-huh. Because unlike your ass, I cared about Roger Corman before he freaking died. <laughs> this is CNN. Interesting fact. Did you know that director? Yes, I did know that. <laughs> I mean, Roger Corman's still alive, and already I'm already up, upset that he's dead. <laughs> no, 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 no. So, no, 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 no. consider this a public I, service yeah. announcement. Be prepared now for Roger Corman's oh, soon eventual death. Just prepare yourself now, get ready for it, and you will thank me later. And unfortunately, take this entire bit and replace roger corman with stan lee i'm sorry yes. he's 95 and shit's going down yeah we we so, are the we are the first to mourn yeah yeah celebrities who are not quite dead yet <laughs> yeah yeah so it, it really is a breaking story for us yeah this is yet another breaking story for us